That's fine. I, I actually don't. Going over this way. Good morning, Donna Narvon. Why don't you come on up, Mayor? Excuse me, Don. I <laughs> Sorry. Come on up this way so we can get you on the camera. I'm too. F I'm too familiar. Where do we stand? Mayor, stand stand by Jacob here. Yeah, right here. Um, good morning and welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Minneapolis City Council. Uh, my name is Barbara Johnson, President of the Minneapolis City Council, and uh, frequently before our meetings we have the uh, pleasure and honor of uh, making some recognition uh, for uh, people who have done uh, great things in our community. And this morning um, we have uh, the pleasure of celebrating Earth Day, but uh, also recognizing uh, our former mayor, uh, Don Fraser, and Arvon, his wife, um, who has always been his partner. You know, I was thinking about your Christmas cards and your Christmas letter that we used to get every year when Don was a congressman uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, I have known the Frasers, of course, uh, nearly my whole life, and I have to tell a little story. Uh, my mother, uh, Alice Rainville, served with um, uh, Mayor Fraser for years, and um, I was an eighth grader. Uh, when uh, I was sitting around the house in the summer and driving my mother crazy saying, what is there to do? What is there to do? And she said, Barbara, she said, there is a young man that's running, young congressman that's running, or young man that's running for Congress in um, uh, Minneapolis. And, uh, you know, he really needs some help. And he, we've had this longtime congressman, Republican congressman, that we need to make a change. And I want you to go down to his headquarters and, and do some work. And your headquarters was on Hennepin Avenue. It was an old... Uh, um, car, car uh, uh, sales place was big. And so I went down there, took the bus down there and did my first uh, stuffing of envelopes and that sort of thing that you used to do uh, in the campaigns and got out of my mother's hair. So that was really a good thing. So um, Don has been, you know, of course, serving our community for so many years. And so uh, his council member, Jacob Fry, wanted to honor him uh, today and recognize some of those achievements. So Jacob. Thank you, President Johnson. I also wanted to tell a really quick story before I got going with the resolution here. I met Don actually at my apartment. I was holding a fundraiser for Congressman Keith Ellison, and I gave the introduction, which was probably a bit too lengthy. And after, uh, after the congressman spoke, uh, I saw uh, this gentleman who was standing over in the corner, uh, which is somewhat characteristic of Don. These, and uh, I asked a friend of mine, you know, who, who was that? And he says, Oh, that's, that's the former mayor, Don Frazier. Uh, he came over today, and he actually hasn't been feeling so well. He's been a bit under the weather. Uh, so I walked over to, to Don and introduced myself. I said, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, my name's Jacob Fry. It's, a, it's an honor to meet you. Thank you so much for your public service. I understand uh, you haven't been feeling so well. Uh, I hope you get better soon. And he responded, son, I've, <clears throat> I said, son, I've been uh, listening to you for the past 10 minutes, and I hope you get better soon, too. <laughs> And what, what struck me after that comment is you know, we, we continued to talk, and uh, I asked him, you know, what about working for the city? And as mayor, uh, do you like the most? And he said, well, it's the tangible benefit, um, even more so than, than working in Congress. You, you benefit people at a very grassroots, tangible level, and uh, that was something that I think I really took to heart. So without further, further ado, whereas... 
Donald McKay Frazier was born in 1924 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the son of University of Minnesota Law School Dean Everett Frazier. He attended the University of Minnesota where he earned a BA degree in 1944. He served briefly in the Pacific Theater during the latter part of World War II and then returned to the University of Minnesota completing his LLB degree in 1948, and whereas Frazier became active in the Democratic Farmer Labor Party beginning in the late 1940s, working on several political campaigns, including Hubert H. Humphrey's race in the U.S. Senate in 1948. Through his work, he met Arvon Skelton, a fellow student also active in the DFL party. They were married in 1950 and had six children. And whereas Frazier was a Minnesota State Senator from 1954 to 1962, representing Northeast Minneapolis in the area around the University of Minnesota. And whereas in 1962, Frazier was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, representing Minnesota's 5th District in the 88th to 96th Congresses, 1963 to 1979. And whereas in 1979, Frazier ran for mayor of Minneapolis, defeating Charles Stenvig by a wide margin. He served four terms, retiring in January of 1994. Mayor Frazier is the longest serving mayor in Minneapolis history. And whereas as mayor, Frazier, Frazier sought to reform the procedures of city government and oversaw a period of extensive downtown redevelopment balanced by historic preservation, including saving the armory, the Stone Arch Bridge, and the Marquette Block, and whereas Mayor Frazier has continued to pursue the improvement of life conditions and learning conditions of the, for infants, children, youth, and their families in our community, this is ex exemplified by his initiation of the Youth Coordinating Board, and most recently with his work on the Committee of the Achievement Gap aimed at eliminating the educational achievement gap experienced by children from high poverty areas. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Minneapolis City Council that we honor Mayor Don Frazier's commitment and service to the city of Minneapolis and program, proclaim February 7th, 2014, Don Frazier Day. Thank you very much. I wasn't sure what was going to happen this morning, so I didn't come with a prepared speech. Um, most of my career careers in public service have only been possible because of my wife, as she has been the key operative, both in winning campaigns and in telling me what to do and sometimes doing it herself. So I, uh, I really appreciate this gesture and uh, want to wish the city council and all of its officers the best. Uh, you continue to have challenges here. I, I found the job of being mayor one of the most interesting jobs I've ever had. And it is partly because you are so immediately close to the problems you can see what happens and um, you can also f see feel the ex impression of what happens when you make bad decisions you get to know that very quickly um, but this is a a great city we have a great city government we've got wonderful people serving and I appreciate this very much. So thank you.
I'm going to call this regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council to order. Clerk, will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Wasami. Aye. Goodman is absent. Fry. Here. Palmasano. Here. Gordon. Here. Cano. Here. Reich. Here. Bender. Here. Glidden. Here. Yang. Here. President Johnson. Here. There are 12 members present. I just might mention Councilmember Goodman is uh, working on city business today. So the next item on our agenda is adoption of the agenda. So moved. Any changes or additions to the agenda? Second. Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next is, excuse me, next is acceptance of the minutes of the regular meeting and adjourned session of January 23rd, 2014. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have referral of petitions and communications and reports of the city officers to proper committees and departments. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have uh, the report from the Committee of the Whole, and that committee is chaired by the Council Vice President, Elizabeth Glidden. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have one item uh, for approval today, and this is a request for council action uh, to establish a work group um, comprised of staff from multiple city departments to review and recommend improvements to the request for council action template for council and committee actions with a report back to Committee of the Whole, and I will move this action. Councilmember Glidden has moved uh, the Committee of the Whole report. Any discussion on that item? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Community Development and Regulatory Services Report, and that report will be given by the Vice Chair of that committee, Jacob Fry. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have 13 items uh, for today. I'll try and go through relatively briefly. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, we have two land sales, uh, items number one and two at 1829 Newton Avenue and 3216 30th Avenue. Uh, we approved numerous liquor uh, and business licenses. Uh, there was a passive of a resolution approving a license settlement for conference recommendations. Uh, that's with ice cream. Inc. That's number four. There was a revocation and a reinstatement of uh, rental licenses. That's numbers five and six. Uh, there was number seven is a passage of a resolution consenting to and approving uh, the issuance of uh, sort of a restructuring of, of bond debt uh, to reduce debt as well as interest costs, and that's for health pot partners. Uh, there's a passage of a resolution approving the governmental program and annual budget for McPhail. It's number eight. Number nine, uh, we approved uh, an extension of three GMHC contracts, lending and administration contracts, through 12 31 2014. Uh, item number 10 was the passage of a resolution in support of the Small Business Administration's Emerging Entrepreneurs Program, uh, and the city agreed to be a sponsor. Uh, and reports referred to the Ways and Means Committee, number 11. Uh, we accept, accepted and appropriated uh, LHIA grants to uh, two different projects, uh, one for PPL DECC in the amount of $200,000, and the second uh, was to the Cameron, which is an affordable pro housing project in North Loop, also for $200,000. Uh, number 12 was just approving the Upper Harbor Terminal Budget for 2014. And finally, item number 13 was authorizing uh, an, an application uh, by Jack Lynx uh, to, the, uh, to deed uh, for about, about $100,000, and this would allow for 20 new high-paying jobs. Um, I will certainly stand for questions, and if there are none, I would uh, offer that we adopt the community, the CD's recommendations. Councilman Fry has moved to the Community Development Report. Anyone want to pull anything off? Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. 
Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Uh, that report is adopted. Uh, next, we have the Intergovernmental Relations Committee, and that committee is chaired by Councilmember Glidden. Thank you, Madam President. There are four items on the agenda for today. The first is approving amendments to clarify provisions in our 2014 state legislative agenda. Um, item two is uh, authorizing the city to become a member of Move Minnesota, which is a coalition supporting a transportation funding bill. Item three is authorizing the city to be a member of the Clean Energy and Jobs Campaign, uh, which works on energy issues at the Capitol. Item number four is authorizing the city to submit comments comments and reply comments regarding proposed FCC rules regarding broadband deployment, and I would move all four items. Councilmember Glidden has moved uh, the Intergovernmental Relations Report. Any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Orsami. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmisano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Uh, next, we have Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we have three items. The first item is an authorization agreement uh, <clears throat> between uh, the Police Crime Lab and Morpho Track for $13,000 for maintenance and support of the live scan fingerprint system. Second item is an agreement between partners and leadership in the MPD for $50,000 for leadership training and to grant a waiver uh, from the city travel policy. And the third item is to approve terms of a memorandum of agreement between the Civil Rights Department and the Minnesota Sports Facilities Authority, uh, passage of re resolution approving appropriation increase of $36,397. And um, I can take any questions, and if not, I will move the three items. Okay. Councilmember Yang has moved uh, the Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Report. Anyone want to pull anything off or any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmisano. Aye. Gordon. Kano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. <clears throat> that report is adopted. Next, we have the Transportation and Public Works report, report with that committee's chair, Councilmember Reich. Thank you, Madam President. The Transportation Public Works Committee forwards 14 items today. The first being the 5th Street North, 8th Avenue North, and 5th Avenue North, and 48th, Avenue, or 48th Street, uh, MnDOT 62 Frontage Road Street Resurfacing Project. It's a passage of a resolution designating the location of an improvements pr uh, proposed uh, for the project and receive the cost estimate and direct the city engineer to prepare the proposed special assessments against the benefited properties. Uh, item two is the Loring Park area and South North Loop area street resurfacing project. Also a passage of resolution designating the location uh, and the imp uh, proposed improvements for the project and receive the cost estimate and direct the city engineer to prepare post special assessments against the benefited properties. Uh, item three regards the sanitary lift station rehabilitation project. It is the authorized to increase the contract with Mer Mer Minger in construction by $170,400 to include rehabilitation of the Calhoun Isles lift station in the sanitary lift station rehabilitation project. No additional appropriation required. Uh, early signature by the mayor is requested. Uh, item four is passage of resolution canceling a water service line repair special assessment for the property located 4949 2nd Avenue South, which was included in the assessment role in error. Uh, item five is authorized execution of a conveyance document from Hennepin County for land needed by the city to construct a retaining wall and sidewalk in conjunction with the Riverside Extension Street reconstruction project at the intersection of 15th Avenue South and 4th Street South. Uh, item six is a temporary construction agreement for bridge number nine repairs. Authorize an execution of agreement with the University of Minnesota regarding this construction activity and easements on and in the vicinity of bridge nine over the Mississippi River. Uh, item seven is an on-street parking mobile phone payment system. Authorize the issuance of an RFP for an on-street parking mobile phone system. Item eight is a master partnership contract with MnDOT. Uh, it's a passage of resolution amending resolution 205 R-166 to include an addition to Exhibit A to provide the city engineer with additional contract authority and passage of resolution authorize the execution of a master partnership contract with MnDOT for a term ending June 30th, 2017. 
Item 9 is the maintenance agreement for MnDOT Railway Bridge. Authorize execution of a maintenance agreement with the Minnesota Department of Transportation for the railway bridge over Central Avenue Northeast between 14th and 18th Avenues. Uh, item 10 is the Central Corridor LRT project. Authorize execution of a subordinate funding agreement 21, otherwise known as FA, SFA 21 with the Metropolitan Council. For work associated with the resurfacing of Pleasant Avenue between Arlington Avenue Southeast and Washington Avenue Southeast, authorize an amendment 1 SFA 5, increasing the maximum reimbursement to the city for the installation of water main isolation valves along the LRT route. And finally, authorize amendment 1 SFA 18 for payment to the city of costs related to signal, lighting, and sewer and water work associated with that project. Item 11 is authorizing increase in contract to Fur Pal Construction USA LLC by $87,468 to allow for the structural lining of a water main at an additional location not included in the original scope of the project. Uh, item 12 uh, is a contract amendment to Hughes Brother Trucking Incorporated, authorizing an increase to that contract uh, by $500,000 for the hauling and disposal of agricultural liming material. Item 13 is the Clean Water Fund grant program agreement, passage of resolution authorizing the execution of an agreement with the Metropolitan Council for Clean Water Fund Grant Program to provide property owners with financial assistance to, uh, for repairs to private sewer services. And the final item are uh, bids, except the low bid of Thomas & Son Construction Incorporated for the construction of ADA pedestrian ramps. And finally, uh, except low responsive bid of Cologne Carbon Corporation to furnish powdered activated carbon to the Water Treatment and Distribution Division. Um, Madam President, I forward all items for approval. Councilmember Reich has moved uh, the Transportation Public Works report. Uh, anyone want to pull anything off or any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Next, we have the Ways and Means Report with that committee's chair, Councilmember Quincy. Uh, thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> the Ways and Means Committee will bring forward uh, seven items for your consideration today. The first item is our, our several uh, legal settlements, uh, one with uh, Michael Sallett, the amount of $7,000, one with Gahafra uh, Tillis in the amount of $30,000, and a uh, negotiated settlement uh, with the City of Minneapolis, HDR Engineering and Graham Construction Services and Siemens Water Technologies. Um, the second item is a uh, authorizing and negotiating uh, authorize the negotiation execution of legal uh, services agreements for bond uh, for several bond council organizations third item is an approval of the 2014 utility billing inserts for rain garden workshop sales and use tax fall street sweeping and yard waste pickup and winter snow plowing and shoveling the fourth item is a uh, bid for pre-sort mailing services the fifth item is the incident referral e-charging services executing a contract with the state of Minnesota to establish communication between the Minneapolis Police Department and the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension e-charging application uh, receiving up to $52,000 from the state of Minnesota and a passage of a resolution appropriating those $52,000 to the Information Technology Department. Uh, and the final item uh, is the Human Resources Information System Upgrade executing the one-year contract with Global Source IT to provide pro professional services to the PeopleSoft system administrator for the HRIS upgrade. I'd like to move all of, of those seven items for your, um, today uh, as presented. Councilmember Quincy has moved the Ways and Means uh, report. Anyone want to pull anything off or any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, clerk will call the roll. Councilmember Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Worsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmisano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. That report is adopted. Uh, next we have resolutions, <clears throat> and the resolution that we have this morning is the passage of an honorary resolution, uh, which was read before the meeting, honoring Mayor Don Fraser's commitment and service to the City of Minneapolis and proclaiming February 7, 2014, Don Fraser Day. Any discussion on that resolution? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. 
Next, we have motions, and the first is a motion by Councilmember Quincy that regular payrolls of city employees under council jurisdiction for the month of March 2014 be approved and ordered paid. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Next, we have the designation of an interim assistant city clerk, and it's a motion by myself to confirm the city clerk's designation of Jackie Hansen as interim assistant city clerk. Any discussion on that uh, motion? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Uh, we have under unfinished business um, a uh, series of uh, new appointed positions in human, ser human resources and regulatory services. And it was the Ways and Means Committee's recommendation from December 3rd, 2013, concurring with the Executive Committee to find that the proposed positions meet the criteria of the code establishing appointed positions and the following uh, positions would be approved. Uh, Human Resources Principal Consultant for Workforce Planning, Human Resources Principal Consultant for Enterprise Performance Management, Regulatory Services Deputy Director Operations and Business Improvement, Regulatory Services Deputy <laughs> Director, Parking Management and Traffic Control, Regulatory Services Deputy Director, Administration and Community Engagement, Regulatory Services Deputy Director, Animal Care and Control, and Regulatory Services Deputy Director, Housing Inspection Services. And then a passage of an ordinance approving the annual salary for said positions. An early signature by the mayor is requested uh, on these items. Any discussion on that? Uh, those positions. Councilmember Yang. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a quick question with regard to these positions. I mean, these are new positions and they're not filled yet or they're filled, but um, we're going to just put new uh, titles on these folks. Um, I think I will give this um, to uh, the question, uh, Councilmember Quincy or Councilmember Glidden. Um, these were positions, um, so I'll let whoever has the history. Councilmember Glidden, did you? Have these, you had the right. So ones, right? Um, the regulatory uh, positions, these are existing uh, positions that are being retitled. Um, you may know that we have a fairly new um, uh, department head in regulatory services. She has had a long process of working uh, with labor and working with her staff and human resources on moving this forward. And yes, these are fill positions. I actually am not positive. There's a couple positions that are from human resources. Again, we also have a uh, newer um, director in that position that has worked on um, uh, effectively um, reorganizing that department in a, in a better way. And I do not believe these are filled right now but they but they're existing budgeted I, I, I just want to say this is not like a, a requesting a new appropriation into the budget there are uh, there is budget for these positions in utilizing existing uh, positions and existing budget although now with a new titling and new classification Councilmember Quincy uh, thank you madam president uh, I Agreed. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Vice President, for that clarification. I just wanted to bring to people's attention, I, I mentioned it uh, a little bit uh, yet in the Committee of the Whole yesterday. Uh, this is really a, uh, an action that is uh, cleaning up a, a clerical, um, uh, I don't want to say error, but it's an error, <laughs> uh, of some actions that were taken by the Executive Committee and Ways and Means Committee uh, last year, and we just need to codify these as uh, uh, final actions on behalf of the Council. Any other questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll. Council Member Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Orsame. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmisano. Aye. Gordon. Aye. Cano. Aye. Reich. Aye. Bender. Aye. Glidden. Aye. Yang. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are 12 ayes. Um, that item is adopted. Next, we have an ordinance introduction as pursuant to notice. Um, myself uh, to introduce the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code um, relating to housing uh, for first reading and referral to the Community Development Regulatory Services Committee, uh, amending requirements applicable to holders of rental dwelling licenses to include a duty to attend certain meetings. Any discussion on that uh, ordinance introduction? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed, that carries. Next, we have an ordinance introduction pursuant to notice by Councilmember Gordon to introduce the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to housing maintenance code for first reading and referral to community development regulatory services, amending provisions related to tenant notification of environmental contamination and associated activities. Any discussion on that ordinance introduction? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. And also pursuant to, to uh, notice, Councilmember Gordon uh, is introducing the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to liquor and beer, liquor licenses for first reading and referral to the Community Development Regulatory Services Committee, increasing the maximum number of temporary expansion licenses a licensee is eligible to receive each year. Any discussion on that ordinance introduction? Seeing none, all in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, that carries. Under new business, we have a notice of intent by Councilmember Glidden um, to give notice. She's giving notice that she will introduce it at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to housing maintenance code, amending provisions related to conduct on licensed premises, required rental property management training, and license reinstatement um, requirements. That notice is given. Councilmember Glidden gives notice also of int her intent to introduce at the next meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to streets and sidewalks, uh, amending Section 42710 to allow certain types of vegetation to be grown within boulevards, incorporating sa safety parameters, and granting the Inspections Department authority to enforce violations pursuant to established administrative processes. That notice of intent is given. Councilmember Fry gives notice of intent to introduce at the next meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to liquor and beer, liquor regulations, requiring the provision of hearing protection devices by the holders of qualifying liquor licenses. That notice of intent is given. Councilmember Glidden gives notice of intent to introduce at the next regular meeting of the City Council the subject matter of an ordinance amending the code relating to the zoning code, accessory uses and structures, Amending requirements related to donation collection bins. That notice is given. So next we have announcements. Does anyone have any announcements uh, this morning? Councilmember Bender. Thank you, Madam President. I have an announcement um, on a little bit of a sad topic. On Monday night, um, a young na man named Marcus Nulls, Nulls was killed while riding his bicycle on Franklin Avenue uh, near Garfield. And Marcus had just moved to Minneapolis from Atlanta. Uh, he was, um, like I said, 26 years old, moved here for a job as a sous chef and was um, really had dreams of becoming an executive chef, uh, was really excited about joining the Minneapolis bicycling community. Um, so people are coming together this Saturday to honor Marcus and um, to memorialize his death. Um, people are meeting at 3.30 in Loring Park uh, for a bicycle ride uh, to memorialize Marcus. And if people want to come and um, join in but aren't winter bicyclists, you could join at 4.30 um, at the site of his death on Franklin and Garfield. Um, so uh, that, that there's more information about that if anyone would like that. And I just um, also want to just take a moment of silence to honor Marcus Knowles. Thank you. Any other announcements? Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tomorrow on Saturday from noon until 3 p.m., there is an event within Ward 12. It is at Lake Hiawatha. It's the Hiawatha Heart Warmer, and it's an opportunity for members of the community to come out and uh, enjoy fun and games and free food. And so I would encourage all my colleagues and anyone else in the city to attend. Lost my screen. Am I okay? That's it. That's it. All right. Um, seeing no further announcements, a motion to adjourn would be in order. Is there a second? Second. All in approval say aye. 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 Opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Maybe a record here. 10 07. <laughs> We're close to record. <laughs>